Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hey everyone, Attack Power here. In this video we have for you game one of a best of five between Yamin and Mamil in the grand final of the Division 1 Season 10 playoffs of the Star Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Halas Haya and on our left in the red team. Playing on the allied side we have Yamin using Corpo Italiano Celebrazione with the Maverick deployment type and on our right in the blue team we have Mamil playing on the Axis side with Festung Dunkirchen with the Maverick deployment type. What do you have to say about these divisions attack bar? Barf to the Maverick mirror income. Always barf to that because it's just not fun. But in terms of divisions here, uh, Yaman with Corpo Italiano. I, I like this division on this map. Shermans are absolutely monstrous in this central town. Uh, your uh, Fusilieri Brens and Maro Brens or whatever, you know, the ones with the four Bren guns and stuff can do pretty well in the longer ranges uh, because, of, of course, they're four Brens. And then, you know, so... It's got some good weapons for that area. It's got some great CQC infantry for these forest patches on the north and south side. So definitely a positive there. On the other side, Emil playing Festung. Uh, this division, I hear very wildly, uh, wildly different opinions about this division. Some people absolutely think it's fantastic. Other people think it's extremely mediocre. I kind of fall in the middle. It's got some great tools, a, a lot of infantry. It's got the Yagkom, which are really, really strong uh, infantry that they get to work with. And tons of spammy, cheap infantry to work with and a lot of Panzer Shreks. Uh, you get a Yag Panther, which is always fun. It's got a fantastic AA tab and a really strong artillery tab. So it, it's definitely an interesting vision for this map. I, I don't love it on this map. I, I'm sure he picked it for the off map. That would be my guess. Uh, but um, it should be an interesting matchup. I'm not sure which way this would go. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, Yamit currently 1-0 up in the series. So we'll have to see if Mamil can take one back this time around. But let's just have a quick look at what units are going down. We have uh, Yamin on the top left here with the 47 mil. He's got the Staghound, some Guestatori Para, Aditi, Alpini, and an L335. Gonna love those little tankettes. Uh, then we have the Lencia Fiemi with the Mara Bren, with the Mara Commander and Alpini Esperanti, with the Aditi, uh, Crusader AA, and a Sherman 3. On the bottom side, it's gonna be another 47 with the Lencia Fiemi and the Staghound, Guestatori Para, and a Mara Squad. On the side of Mimil, on the top right, we have the Alfklada, Flammewerfer, and there's some Stoss trooping in there, Pioneer Führer. We got Festung Grenadiers and the Jagdkampf. Further down, it's going to be Flammewerfer, Alfklada. We've got the Erdkampf, heads coming out in Phase A with the Jagdkampfs there, the Panzer IV, Marder III, plenty of Festung Grenadier, of course. And on the bottom side, we've got Alfklada, Flammewerfer, Stoss Turpen, Jagdkampf, and the Festungs Grenadier. IAR196 coming out of the start as well. Interesting biplane, does have 20 mil guns for strafing. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good strafer. Like, weirdly feels better than it should. Uh, Spitfire has no armament. One thing to remember, too, about Festung is they have a lot of tractions, and a lot of units can come in those tractions, which is pretty advantageous at the beginning of the game. Yeah, they are speeding to the front line right now, trying to get good positions with those flamethrowers with the Alfklada, get them into the church early on. That would be very nice. Uh, but this flamethrower on the bottom side looks like it might have a bit of a bad time as the stack out just drive by <laughs> it. <laughs> that was awesome. But yeah, the Alfklada is going to find its way into the church, which is a big advantage for Mamel, going to give him a lot of information about what's coming his way. And uh, the flame feathers are spread out nicely. Uh, neither flame, neither side's flamethrower is really bumping into each other. On the top side, the uh, stag count is killing off another flamethrower there for though. Yeah, that one tried to go a little too aggressive and could not get all the way there. Uh, although there's not much to do with the Staghound. The Yagdekampf Yag here with the Pandrashrex, the only chance, on, and that's only if the Staghound just keeps driving, which it, it looks like it already caught the Yagdekampf out, so eh, probably not going to do much. Now the Crusader AA Ooh. in the middle. Ooh, what do we miss? Yeah, the uh, Lancia FM uh, managed to get a transport snipe onto the Yagdekampf before they unloaded. Did a lot of damage, oh. didn't quite get the pin in time uh, but yeah that was a significant amount of damage going to allow the Maro to come in here and really just finish them off uh, Crusader AA is forcing back the AR in the meantime we got a 164 mil off map already on the way from Mimil which is what we expect out of Festung Ooh, off map is <laughs> garbage I'm sorry I'm not sorry at all actually off map is garbage <laughs> it is trash and you should never use it 
well, I don't know. In a competitive setting, it is good. Is Fresh. it? Uh, is it uh, ethical? No, it is <laughs> morally it is morally wrong, and I condemn this play pattern. <laughs> Moral, morals. That's 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 probably the better way to put it, rather than ethical. <laughs> no, it, it's unethical. This is like this. This is on okay, the level of piracy. Well right. Yes. Well, the stack count of Yaman has found its way to the back line, but the Marder turned around and might find the kill. It does. What a shot! Beautiful stuff. We're going to have to keep an eye on that off map now that it's placed down. Uh, meanwhile, Yamin actually looking for the surround on the top side with the L335 pushing the front line. And the Baltimore coming in. Oh, it did spot the Kubo. Is that going to die to the bombing strike? Oh, oh. I was rooting for it. I wanted it that to land. Close. <laughs> I wanted it to kill it so bad. I mean, and, and serious conversation though for newer players. Remember, off map, yes, it is very strong, and if you use it properly, it can be really almost impossible to counter. But it is a ton of points, and if you don't get value out of it, it's not helping you at all in the long term. Yeah. So the main thing with off map is it's a tool that you help to set up pushes. Uh, you place it down, it pins down all of the units, sometimes kills them, and then you push in hard with the units that you have ready to go. In this case, for example, Mill dropped his off-map strike and didn't really follow it up, and it didn't really get many kills. And that off-map jeep is not cheap. You know, like you said, it's 170 points. Off-map has continually been nerfed over the course of the game um, coming out. So in this case, yeah, like Mill's trying to soften up the opposing forces in the town but if he doesn't really push with like the Panzer four or the festivals grenadier whilst their enemies are pinned down he's not really going to get much value out of it yeah it just doesn't do anything and in the meantime up north yaman's making a ton of progress the only thing left there's yagkonf a martyr three's coming in. that's not going to stop all this though there's a lot of infantry coming in maros alpinis staghound sneaking in up north i mean the yagkonf of course held off these couple infantry squads but there's way more getting in past that um, he did read the L three, the L three thirty five running yeah, down the first two <laughs> <laughs> I assumed him watching that is really funny. And now the AR is um, going to try to kill it, which it will really struggle to do because the tankette does have armor. Yeah, yeah, it has enough armor. I mean, the twenty mil might kill it over time, but we got Spitfire Mark five coming in to shoot down uh, the AR one nine six. I don't think the Flak forty three no. is not going to get there in time, so. Goodbye to that biplane for now. Nice kill for Yaman. We'll take that back to the top side of the map uh, in order to get out of range. Panzer four in the middle town going after the 57 mil, but the 57 mil still gets one penetration. That's all it needs to do, so because that way the Sherman can get, sneak around a corner and sh one shot it at that point, because the Sherman always fires first. Yakam Mundo up north getting in. Will it survive? Yeah, the top side looking very, very bad mill right now yes the Yakov surviving there against the Maro was pretty nice uh the Yak commander of course not pushing the front line because of recon uh, but we have the Sostrupen on the way to help with that problem uh panzer four yeah still surviving in the middle for the time being the sherman three can peak that to probably get the kill nothing meanwhile happening on the bottom side of the map we're just gonna have to keep an eye on the progress here that yaman is making in the set and uh in the center town I mean, Emil does have the advantage right now, for sure. Stolstrupen are going deep. And luckily for him, the Alpini are too focused on the Yag Commando to go after those. So they do get by. Yagkampf going down, though, and that Staghound's going to be an issue. There's, I mean, Panzer IV coming in, but that does not trade well. The Staghound can kill the Panzer IV. Yeah, at close to Rangers, Staghound will definitely have penetration, decent penetration, in fact. Uh, the Yagkampf is chilling out nearby with the panzer wreck though which is a bit of a problem those double sostrupen squads just get surrendered one of the l3s did go down to the panzer fast in the meantime the rtt almost finishing off the jagdkampf there so a lot of this uh, infantry that mamil has brought in has been chipped quite significantly the stack hand does get killed off by the jagdkampf so mamil's just gonna have to set up another push to get back in there meanwhile yamin also uh, reinforcing on his side of things but mamil trying to push forwards in the town well, this is a nice change to see here, too. We do not often see pushes up north. This is a very rarely, rarely, usually it's just red getting their flag back and that's the end of it. We don't usually see a push up north. So this is a nice change in strategy that not many players are willing to take. Yeah, it's mainly due to the way that the 
flags are placed. Uh, he can maybe get two flags up here if he gets deep into that topside town, but for now it's still 12 to 12. And that's mainly because Mimel is holding this very center flag that I think starts on the red side, and then it does. Uh, Yamin is holding the hill flag there. So still even regardless of the territory. Yeah, and this Panzer IV might actually be a big force multiplier up north because there's no AT there right now. And there's really none coming. So this Panzer IV is, for the moment, indestructible. It just depends if Meal uses it aggressively enough to really help him. He did use up the last charge from his 164 millimeter off map. It's been a slow barrage in on that central reinforcement line. Uh, Maro Bren out fighting the Jagdkampf, even with the veterancy difference, and that's what four light machine guns will do, even a bad light machine gun like the Bren. Yep, now the Mimil moving up that uh, jeep, I assume just for radio purposes for the time being. And on the bottom, we've got some reinforcements coming in. We've got uh, Arditi, Marakamanda, as he's pushing forwards with the Guestasoidi Pala. There was a little bombing strike kick that came in here, forced back one of the Festung's Grenadier, and that's I think left him kind of blind on this bottom side because the Alfkala in those buildings in between the town and the bottom side actually can't see the bottom. Yeah, this is actually really bad because the Gwostatori and the Maro are, will absolutely destroy all three of these units. Uh, Stolzthrupen, they're not amazing CQC infantry. They have a grenade, but they're, they're so low health they can actually die before they throw it. Nice snipe from the Maro 3. Takes out a uh, Maro Brun before they unloaded on the top side. So, taking away what is a relatively decent unit. Uh, we've got uh, the Manor Commander now actually arriving on the bottom side to provide that extra veterancy, and Yamin will wait for that to unload before engaging that so that he takes less damage from that engagement. Yeah, and this is actually surprisingly a, a very light defense from Emil down south. This is usually where the red player pushes because there's three flags to get. Uh, so this this could be pretty devastating here. Yeah, three star Gwest Tidy Pada. Here we go. Yes. Stostrup and gonna be having a very, very bad time. <laughs> They're immediately forced back by the flames. Not gonna be continuing that engagement just yet, probably busy focusing on the middle micro. This town can be a nightmare for micro. Oh <laughs> you have to really keep an eye on it, especially when you've got a lot of vehicles in there. There's so many like weird lines of sight and things that you can't even see with your sight line like cool, it's so annoying. Uh, Jagdkampf did get in, and, uh, and he is bringing some more reinforcements, so he might be able to keep this penned into this little woods here. Uh, he did kill the Sherman in the town. This is a fresh Sherman, I believe, uh, back on the line. Here it is. Uh, so definitely some progress there. Uh, the infantry are slowly getting pushed back. Uh, up north, still no prior. He lost his infantry. His Panzer IV is still basically invincible, other than to the Maro Bren, which has a Panzerfaust, but that's probably not getting close enough to use it anytime soon. Spiffar coming in on the bottom side. AR came in for the strafe run onto the Gustatori. Did pin them down. But the Spitfire going to be cleaning that up. And the Mado finishing off the Sostropen and the Festung's Grenadier there, giving another flag to Yamin, pushing him to the 1311, which is going to allow Yamin to start trying to get ahead on tickets. And uh, Mamil, with his first tick of B phase income, calls in his 194 millimeter off map. Yeah, it's a big boy. Gets three strikes because it's under 200 millimeters. That's, so. It's so wrong. That's so wrong. <laughs> it's the biggest off map with the most amount of yes, strikes. Yes, it should. It sh <laughs> this should be a rounding thing. <laughs> it rounds up to 200 close enough. It should not get three. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we'll see those hopefully put to good use in the center of the map so that Mamel can oh. take these flags he's been going for. Jagdkampf in the middle pushes way forward, gets a Crusader AA with its Pander Shrek going after the Sherman now. Will it get this kill? It does! Oh my goodness! Uh, what were we talking about? I'm not paying attention in the middle and. In the center town, <laughs> this Jagdkampf here that's way far forward killed a Crusader AA and a Sherman with its Pander Shrek and now it's yeah, killing a no, leader. I was talking about the uh, like the players, not, oh. not like keeping an eye on their micro in the center, and it really, <laughs> really costing them. Uh, but yeah, on the bottom side, uh, Aditi trying to do their best here. Marta three has been called up. Loads of reinforcements coming in from Amel here. He need, he knows he needs to stop that in its tracks. He's going to be happy, uh, relatively happy on the top side, especially considering he is starting to make a lot of progress in the mid thanks to those kills. But the Agkamp 
They're finally getting surrendered. Yeah, he got some good kills, but there's still a lot of infantry there. It's it's not like he's really broken Yaman down a ton. The Stuart down south goes down to the Martyr 3, so that's nice to get rid of that armored support. These are just Luftwaffe Jaegers coming in, though. They're not super strong. They'll be able to recapture this flag, but they will get shredded by any of these infantry. Ed can flip it, firing down the road here towards the model <laughs> at the end. That looks very cool. Now the AR coming in for the strafing runs and the JU-88 bomber coming over the top. There is no AA here to stop things. Uh, that JU-88 actually doesn't have a target. No, so. it's just flying. The 194 is coming down. It's doing some nice damage opening that, but, but Mamil needs to follow it up. He's just throwing down off maps for no benefit whatsoever. Yeah, so definitely a trap you can fall into, kind of hoping that your off map does enough damage to get the job done for you. And sometimes yeah. it does. It, it, like sometimes it lands exactly where you need it and you get kills, but it's so like RNG dependent if you're relying solely on kills. The best way to use it is just to get those guaranteed surrenders with the suppression. They are going after the lead, the commander back here. Killing that would be epic. I would give him lots of props for that. I don't think he'll kill it in one strafing run, though. Uh, the JU-88 might come around for it. It is, but the Crusader AA is working itself into position, and he will lose his eyes with the AR, so the bomber will unlikely to hit. Baltimore down south now, with the help of the Spitfire Recon, will do some good damage, I would imagine. Yep, going to be hitting those Jagdkampf very nicely. Takes them out in one go. And uh, now we have a Sherman 1 arriving on the bottom side, which is going to be a meaty target to take care of. It does have that 110 millimeters of frontal armor, so uh, the Marder and the Stug both going to be having a much harder time trying to penetrate that. Yeah, the uh, bombing strike did miss the uh, commander there, so Veteran C still, still achieved here for Emil, and he's dropping a very odd off-map kind of... I'm not sure what he was expecting to be there, to be honest with you. I think that's just another barrage, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Sit on the road there and block the reinforcements coming into the town so that he can continue to make his way forwards with his infantry here, which is slowly but surely uh, getting through. Uh, he just needs to bring up like a big wave of infantry, I think, and just fully capitalize and take the rest of the town. Uh, although he has lost his flag on the top side here, the Yacht Pioneer, going to have to try and push back Gwesta Tori Pala, and that's not going to be a fun time. Nope. And then this uh, Festung's going to deer getting forced off as well. Uh, so, looks like Yamin found a way to deal with the Panzer IV there, and uh, capitalizing on that with more flags. Yeah, I do. Oh, the 57 mil must have been the answer. Uh, yeah, now, yeah, those two flags up north. That Yag The Yacht Pioneer is really not good in terms of a unique... CQC unit, so it's never going to beat the Gustatori. Yep, they're going to come back and finish the job. Uh, meanwhile, only a Luffy Hager on the way from a mill. Things coming in piecemeal. He does bring in a Stug, finally. We are into phase B, so both players have that 170 points per minute, so they will have a chance to buy bigger units. But uh, it's really coming down to whether or not Mamil can secure this town properly and sit on these flags because he needs to kind of counteract the push that Yamin has made on the top side. Well, and the push he's making on the bottom here now too. He just captured this flag on the top of the bottom hill. Um, kind of just dodging the entire concentration of defenses there. And part of the, part of this is too, his off map is biting him in the butt because there's no more buildings to hide his troops in. So like, it's hard to keep Yamin out of the town because there's no defenses. Yep, and uh, the, come, come, the one thing I do like about Yamin right now is uh, he's got like all of the units kind of on the outskirts of the town, and it's just about allowing him to hold on to the flags. Uh, the one furthest to the north in the town has just been captured, uh, after I say that. But uh, more reinforcements now coming in for Yamin to try and take that all back. Meanwhile, 17 pounder up on the ridge is getting shots into the Panzer Fort in the town. That would be a nice kill because it would allow a lot more flexibility for Yaman's infantry. Yeah, the Stug 3 a lot less dangerous to infantry for sure. Uh, lacking that second machine gun. And also the Stug 3 is probably going to be under a little pressure from that 17-pounder as well. 17-pounder takes out that Panzer IV and the flag flips back. 16-8 for Yaman now with him resecuring both the northern flags a little bit more definitively. 
Yep. And the pain just continues as the elite infantry of the Corpo Italiano della Polizione slams the Festung's Grenadier on the bottom side. Because the Heroic Pala just doing so well with those Flamers uh, and those Berettas. Uh, just getting tons of work done. Being one of the top, same deal. Jagd Pioneer, Festung's Grenadier forced back. There's just not enough of them, unfortunately, at this point. Usually with the Festung's Grenadier, you'd, you'd hope to outnumber your opponent uh, with number of squads, but in this case, like 1v1, those guys thought the pallet just going to get infinite value. Yeah, and one of my big issues with Festung is they don't have good CQC. The Yag Pioneers are really not strong CQC units. They're just meh. They're, they're essentially, I would think they're kind of worse than Sturm Pioneers, really. They don't even have submachine guns. And um, outside of that, the Stolzrupen are not very strong CQC units, and that's it. You, know, you really struggle to win forest fights. Yeah, the Stug in the middle did go down to the 17-pounder in the end, so oh. no more armor left in the center town for Mamil, and that's going to make him very vulnerable to things like Shermans. There are M10s, actually, uh, supporting at the moment, but um, and no Shermans just yet, but that would be really nasty. Yeah, the Shermans will totally carve through all his entry, but Mamil using up some of his remaining points are almost out of B-phase on another 194 millimeter off map. Uh, I am judging. I'm, I'm judging hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm judging well, so hard. I think at this point he's hoping that it can just keep him in the game, but th he needs a win condition right now because he's being pressured on every flank. <laughs> he's getting kind of pushed back in the middle right now by the uh, double Wolverine Commandosi push. He's, he's kind of pushed out of this top side and not really making any progress as another Luftwaffe Jäger gets sliced to pieces by the Quest of Toribara. And uh, on the bottom side as well, the Commandosi is holding the line nicely against the Luftwaffe Jäger at close range. And the Yug Pioneers getting uh, caught out there as well. So Oof. it's looking really, really bad. Yeah, my argument there would be then don't spend 180 points on an off map that's only affecting one teeny sliver of front of, th of front. I can speak, you know, that hundred yeah. and that 180 points is a lot of infantry. It's 10 squads yeah. of those festoons. I definitely agree. I definitely yeah. agree. There's uh, a lot of off map investment in this game that just really hasn't been used properly. No, in my opinion, it's garbage because off map <laughs> is garbage. Nobody uses it. It's trash. <laughs> oh, the quest of Tori. Uh, on the bottom side, getting some shots into the flak 43. Commandosi RDT uh, moving up here to try and deal with the Luftwaffe Jäger as well. But that flak 43 oh. now going down opens up more bombing strikes on the bottom side. Sherman's going to be looking to take out the Marder if the Commandosi can't do it first with their Piat. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Well, and one thing. Oh, that Jagdkampf dying in the transport. Mamil oh, getting a yeah. little too aggressive with his transport call in there. Oh. Um, one thing Yaman has done really well this game, we see him doing a lot of games, is leadership. I mean, the dude always has his stuff vetted to the moon. Yeah. And, and uh, all of this infantry on the bottom side, you see a three vet, two yeah. vet. I mean, the common dosi come in at two vet anyway. So just the Sherman one nearby needed. And I think uh, a lot of his infantry is already like pre-vetted up, so um, he is getting easy value out of these infantry and against uh, the units like Luftwaffe Jäger, First Things Grenadier, that can't get any of that like pre-vet. Uh, they are absolutely doing work right now. Yeah, the veterancy, even one level of veterancy difference makes a big difference in the fight, but having two or three levels of veterancy difference, uh, you can't. it doesn't matter the quality of your infantry, you're always going to lose. So Mamel still struggling to capitalize on the off map as he brings in it. Yes, another strike uh, in the center. It's just the it's this top and bottom flanks have just been completely dominated by Yamin throughout the game so far. And he's really, really struggling here. And I don't really see much of a way out because there's no amount of infantry that the Festung's do you have in the late game that is going to help deal with what's going on <laughs> no they have basically the the two cards Jagdkampf and the rest of their infantry are kind of garbage um from there now there's a quality in their quantity sure uh 
but not against these the the quantity of high quality infantry that he's currently facing. And again, I mean, he he put 500 points into off map into the center. It's not shocking that he doesn't have the troops to hold the flanks. Yeah. And uh, we just see more and more units from Yamin now flooding in. He's bringing up a couple of 20 mils even to provide some AA further up. Uh, he's had these uh, artillery at the back also firing away throughout the game, uh, which has definitely been helping him uh, sort of secure some of these engagements. So that's been nice. Yeah, the south completely cracked open now. Uh, there's not even any more flags for him to capture down there. Uh, now he's just kind of pushing for that town flag, and there's literally the only thing holding it is an artillery gun. Uh, that's that's never good. <laughs> yeah, going for the barns <laughs> on the crossroad. <laughs> like, that's deep now. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's not good. <laughs> that's yeah. really not good. I'm surprised that Mabil is still thinking that he could potentially bring this back, because otherwise you'd just surrender at this point, surely. We have moved into phase C. Both players only 80 points per minute. But I'm not determined to bring this one back. It is the grand final, of course. And there is money on the line. There is. How valuable is your time? Becomes the question. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and now the Basaglietti probably going to wipe these camp pioneers out while they're out in the open. Artillery getting hit as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing going right here. Comfilet does get a kill. These things are still fabulous and super fun. Guastatori up north finally go down, and Mamil finally recaptures that northern flag. I think it took like three Yagd pioneers to actually get that job done. Yeah, now the reinforcements uh, are arriving there. Not like a particular He's got the uh, the Crusader AA, the L3. The Stug is going to be the main thing he's going to have to deal with. But yeah, the fact that Yemen has this uh, 57 mil and then the 47 mil like that far up is so irritating to deal with for Mamil. Oh, yeah. And he can't seem to get the artillery to, to do the job. Like, he's got these 76s out, but, like, they aren't radio. They're not they're very effective. Like, they're not, not going to be enough. Yamin going for a, um, a a reinforcement grab here with his Guastatori. Oh, yeah. He's, he's going for the <laughs> touchdown. Yep. Uh, he would have to be in the middle of the map to make that work, though, because that's actually not a reinforcing road. But, um... He is going to go for it regardless. Drive all the way to the back there, but those quests are totally, of course, going to get cut off for now at least. But <laughs> it feels like Yamin's going to go for like the, the capture every lulls. flag on yeah, the map at this point. <laughs> oh, the artillery oh, cool. actually takes it out. And the Stug did kill one of the Sherman ones, which was definitely a plus. Needed to get rid of that armor support. Uh, up north, Stug 3 goes down on the 47 mil. Those things, uh, those just... things are disgusting. Yeah, it just opens up the door. Yeah, the Breda yeah. 47. It's just the most ludicrous gun in the game. <laughs> I know, it's like 65 millimeters of pen. Kill everything. Like, it doesn't matter what your armor actually is. It's just like, this will probably pen you after it fires 40 times in a minute. Yeah, it's the rate of fire that, that catches things out. Like, you have a minimal amount of penetration, but if you fire enough times, you, you know, one of those is going to penetrate eventually. Now infantry dying in the transport. The other camp pioneer hopping out. These camp pioneers are really not actually good pioneer units at all. Uh, they're really for the Panzerschreck, I would say. Um, they're smaller than a normal pioneer unit. They have only two submachine guns, and they just have a grenade. Like, they're not good. <laughs> yeah, now, <laughs> even when we're having to deal with this quest of Dolly that's, like, sneaking around his back line, we're going to start unloading troops as they come in on the middle of deployment type <laughs> that's uh, that's gonna be uh really 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 irritating for him meanwhile in the center crusader aa getting direct fire onto this yag camp absolutely tearing them to pieces with the two vet and the 65 mil infantry gun also firing away with the artillery support so that's just not not looking good for Mamel. It hasn't for actually quite a long time now to be honest no I'm I surprised he's still trying to get into this I mean, respect, mad respect. Like no one can go in the comments and be like, "Whoa, he should, he got to play to the end. Like sometimes folks, the game is kind of over. Yeah, absolutely. Wolverine beating the Stug on the bottom side. Sherman one getting off a transport on the bottom side as well. And uh, pinning down the Marine infantry. He could probably just rush for the surrender there as well. Um, 
Best thought I can't do much about the Sturg on the back line there. Oh, nice bombing strike there from the DO217. Does clean up some of the infantry and support weapons. That's where capturing one of those flags. But now the Crusader A on the top side going to be coming in with the L3 to provide direct fire support onto the Luftwaffe Jäger. And with those taken care of, it's just the Jagdkampf standing in the way of this flag. And that is now a triple tick for Yamin. It was basically a matter of time, really. Martyr 3 versus Wolverine. Martyr 3 going down, so really the last piece of armor support in the central town. Uh, Stug 3 coming to try to fix that, but I'm not sure how long it'll last in this situation. A Pack 38 unloaded at Mamil's reinforcement road down at the south. Kind of knowing now what Yaman's little plan is here. Uh, he's going to try to stop this Sherman from capping that flag. If he starts yeah, firing... Last hope. If he start, yeah, so he started firing before the Sherman got... Well, no, yeah, he's backing up now. The the Sherman the uh, Pack thirty eight really can't pen this at range without its APCR so the Sherman should be pretty safe. Yeah, yeah, the Sherman's fine there with one hundred and ten mils of frontal armor. Although but, um, we shouldn't say that because every time I say that a unit pens things that it has no right to pen. Like that. Yeah, did it die? <laughs> oh my god! You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> oh come on! That's gotta be like a. Five ten percent penetration shots right yeah, there. <laughs> it's because I open my big mouth, it jumps to ninety percent. <laughs> uh, Baltimore uh, going for the bombing strike there. I, I mean, not that Yaman needs it again. Although we're back to a sixteen eight. Although there's a minute left here for ya for Mamil. Uh, just nothing. There's nothing for him to do here. Absolute domination by Yaman in this game. He's done incredibly well. And I mean, it really just comes down to, like we mentioned already, the infantry quality and disparity um, that really allowed him to capitalize on this bottom and top, uh, bottom and top side of the map. Yeah, and I just, I, 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 this is my issue with this division. I feel like I've seen a lot of people play this division on this map, specifically thinking, oh, the off map will crack the middle wide open. It really doesn't. Like, it just doesn't really do that. And then you end up sinking all these points and you can't defend all... Because this is really like three battlefields on this map. You have to be able to fight on all three. And now the southern yeah. spawn point is captured, by the way, for, for the lols. Hey, touchdown! <laughs> we got there. That's the first touchdown I think I've seen in a Steel Division League game for like five years. It's been quite a while. I mean, I've seen a few. Well, I mean, in like the finals. Yes, okay. yes, in the finals for sure. Yeah, I've seen a few in lower divisions, but usually Division One, they either don't let it happen or surrender by now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It took three. Did manage to get two Wolverine kills though, but uh, seven seconds, five seconds left on the clock. I mean, there we go. <laughs> now he surrenders. surrenders. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well just let it tick out at that point. Yeah, 30 minutes, 8 seconds, minor victory for, <laughs> how I call that a major victory, for Yavin. Yeah, I mean, uh, 3,010 kills, 2,125 losses. KD, maybe not as one-sided as it looks, but a uh, couple of kills picked up there at the end for Mamel, certainly. Made that look a little bit better. Um, yeah, rough, really, really, really rough game there for Mamel. Yeah. And you have to remember, too, actually, the kills were a lot bigger. It's just that all the units in Festung are a lot cheaper, and all the units in the Italiano are a lot more expensive. So, yeah, it it it, it was as bad as it looked. The points just don't reflect that. And yeah, the only hero play, really, was the Jagdkampf in the middle with the double Panzerk kill. That was nice. Um, but that's it for now, I guess. Anything else you'd like to add? No, hit that like button and subscribe if you guys are still here. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, of course. Um, so we'll be moving on to game three soon enough. Currently 2-0 to Yamin. That's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.